you were a pastor and you mm -hmm. want to transition to real estate. Yeah. So like, what did that decision look like exactly? Man, that's a great question. It was scary. One, because I, I didn't know anything about real estate. There are times where, you know, we, we could beat a wholesaler down and, and get it for two grand less, but like, is that worth the relationship no. over the next five years where we're going to yeah, make $500,000 to send a million off of them off of one deal and ruining that relationship? And same with the wholesaler. Yeah. And I think that they believe that with us where it's like, and that that's the entire model that we've built yeah. in our company is, is you build relationships. People are going to sell to you if they like you and they trust you. All right, guys, on the podcast today, we have Cam from St. Louis. He had done over 375 transactions. He makes $25,000 a month net cash flow. He's an absolute beast at real estate investing. And we're going to teach you sales. We're going to teach you hiring. We're going to teach you how to scale. It's going to be great. So let's get straight to it. All right, man. How's it going, baby? Excited to have you on. Hello, brother. Excited to be here. Excited to have you on. I know you are crushing it right now. Flipping, wholesaling, buying rentals, everything. So um, for people who don't know who you are, mm -hmm. can you give us a, an intro? Yes. So my name's Cam Cathcart. I invest in St. Louis, but I recently moved to Maui. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Did you know that? No, no, I thought you lived in St. Louis. No, I live in Maui, man. Oh, Our okay. business is in St. Louis. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but live in Maui now and we, uh, we flip houses, we, we wholesale houses and yeah. we have a rental portfolio there. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, before we get into how you're absolutely crushing it right now, um, what got you into real estate? Ooh, great question. Do you want the, the full story? Uh, yeah, I let's get, keep okay. it. Yeah. Let's keep it somewhat short, but yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. So, um, I was a pastor before. Oh, I got into really? Real estate. Yeah, I was a pastor at a, a church out in Colorado. Absolutely incredible church that I worked at. Um, but I was I made forty thousand dollars a year, so it was not, not yeah. rolling in the dough, which was fine because I loved what I did and I felt called to it. Okay. Um, but my wife and I, we were always paycheck to paycheck. Like the, mm. the entire time that we were doing that, we were paycheck to paycheck, and um, I knew that I knew that I needed to make more money. Um, oh, really? But. Uh, when my daughter who is six now was mm -hmm. a year old, she had a medical emergency oh, really? um, and we rushed her to the hospital. And at the time we weren't like getting our insurance, looking up what's in network, what's out of network. And we took her to somewhere that was out of network. And so she ended up being fine. But about two weeks later, we were sitting down at the, the dinner table and we were opening up mail and we got a bill for $15,000. Oh um, boy. Yeah. And at the time, we had about $300 in our bank account. And Oof. I remember, yeah, I remember sitting there that night and just feeling so defeated as a, as a husband, as a father, not as a, I, just like, I can't provide for my, my family, you know? Oh, and damn. So that was, uh, that was 2019 when that happened. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting at the dinner table saying, something has to change. Mm -hmm. uh, I cannot live the rest of my life. Uh, being reactive to a medical emergency or even, you know, a, a car problem or anything like that. Yeah. So um, in 2019, I actually was uh, trying to figure out, like, how, how do I make a little bit more money? Yeah. And so uh, literally I've heard the quote, and I don't even know if it's true, but that 90% of millionaires do it through real estate. Yeah. And so I was like, I hear right. that a lot. Yeah, no idea if I it's don't true know if it's true, <laughs> but it's like, all right, real estate yeah. is, it, that's what it is. And so I literally got on to... Uh, onto Google and just started like looking up real estate stuff. And, and one of, here's a crazy story what? is the very first podcast that I listened to was Ryan oh, okay. on bigger pockets. Oh, yes. okay. Ryan Small on world. bigger pockets. And he was talking about how he was doing like 50 to hundred homes a year or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and I think it was when the flip your future book had just came out something like okay. that. And, and so I, I, I ordered his book. I ordered like a couple of, um, Bigger Pockets books and just started reading and listening to as many podcasts uh, and books as I could during 2019. Got it. Mm -hmm. That's so funny. Yes. So crazy, crazy story. And then uh, 2020, we we started and okay. just have you know we started running a million miles an hour and yeah, it worked. You know, it worked. So <laughs> that's yeah. an easy way to say it worked. We're yeah, just, we're doing uh, okay. Yes, so. so okay, so walk me through your first deal. So when okay. you came in. Were you flipping houses? Were you wholesaling? Were you trying to build passive income? Like, what were you trying to do? So we didn't know what we were doing. Um, okay. Yeah, we, we didn't That's not a good know. Plan. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I was just so focused on, hey, I, I needed a change in my life. I did not want to live the rest of my life 
not knowing how I was going to provide for my family. Mm. And so I knew that I needed a change. And uh, it, what I did was definitely not smart, where I just was like, I'm going to, I'm going to invest in real estate. Okay. And, um, That's smart. That yeah. Well, like yeah, yeah, so not, yeah. But without, an, without a plan. And yeah. I am the, I've never done any sort of manual labor in my, well, manual labor I've done, but I've never done any sort of like contracting work. I yeah. can't tell you the difference between a Phillips and a flathead. You know, know what I'm yeah. yeah. So, yeah. um, and we bought a house, uh, in St. Louis and, um, I, I just thought the rehab was going to be forty thousand dollars. I don't know how I came up with that. Yeah, um, but you're like this is about yeah, exactly, forty grand. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's it. yeah. I close my eyes and throw a dart at the dartboard. Oh, forty grand. Yeah. So, um, so we bought it, and the first, literally the, the first contract that we bought brought through was like, hey, this is going to be a hundred twenty thousand dollar rehab, and oh, I just got shoot. sick to my stomach. Oh yeah, boy, sick to my stomach. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm I'm going bankrupt. Yeah, but but I will say this. <laughs> here here was the great thing when we started real estate. We yeah. we were broke, and so like I had. I could only go up from there, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh. So it can't get any worse. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. It can't get any worse. But uh, uh, so my wife and I, we actually, it, we had a, at this time we had a, a one-year-old and a newborn who was two weeks old when we bought this first house. Oh, no. And we blew up an air mattress and we went and lived in the house with our one-year-old, our newborn, and a dog. Wow. And we did the work ourselves. Yes. And so... You had her working? Oh, dude. Damn, yeah, there's pictures. That's a ride <laughs> yeah. or die right there. There's My pictures wife would of her. <laughs> she's, she's in there painting. She's in there. Yeah. It's, uh, so we did the work ourselves. Yeah. Um, and we ended up making, you know, I, I think it was like six to $8,000 on that deal. Really? Which if you counted our man hours, we would have lost $20,000, you know? Yeah, yeah. But we did the work ourselves. And, um, was it good work? Cause no, it was terrible work. I look at pictures of that and it was terrible, <laughs> tough. absolutely terrible work, but we did it. And at the end of that, I think it was, even though I hated the experience, I was up at two in the morning painting walls and I'm cussing everything and everybody out at the yeah. time we got done with it. And there was this sense of pride of like, we did this, we can do this. Um, okay. and we got done with that. And, uh, as much as I hated it during the mm -hmm. process, we got done with it and I'm like, all right, we did it. We can do this. Let's yeah. do it again. Let's do it again. And then I think the next week we bought like five more houses. Oh yeah. my God. Uh -huh. You're yeah. terrible. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're like, yeah, this was good. We're, <laughs> we got the air it. mattress. I got yeah. my dog. My wife is paying. Uh, Let's do it five yes. more times. Let's so, do it. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. So, so, and we, then we just, we literally never stopped since yeah. then. We just yeah. like, kept buying houses like crazy. Okay. So, when you bought your first house, were you already living in St. Louis? Because you were in Colorado, so, right? So, yeah. So when I, again, if, if I would have known what I knew now, I knew that I could have done it in Colorado. But Colorado, the market was really expensive. And yeah, St. Yeah, yeah. you know, you couldn't buy a house. You can get into a house for under $400,000 there. Oh, okay. St. Louis, like that first house we bought, we bought at one thirty. Yeah. And sold at like two fifteen. you know, so. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And then how much did you end up putting in that first deal? Dude, we probably put like $20,000 and then a lot of manual labor. So Holy we didn't, we moly. didn't do the rehab that we needed to, to do to it. We, yeah. we painted it, refinished the cabinets. <laughs> Got landlord new appliances. Special. Yeah, exactly. It Have was, you seen those memes where yeah. the landlord special, someone has like a rolling paint and they just kind of go over the, <laughs> yeah, that, that was the electrical was, things yeah. and the light switches? Uh, yeah. We kept the floors and the floors, it was an older house and the floors yeah. were all wavy in it. Okay. And, so yeah, it had character. It had character, man. Yeah. And, and so we... Uh, we we did not do what we were wanting to do with it, but at the same time, if we would have done what we were wanting to do with it, we would yeah. have lost a lot of money. Did you so. <laughs> did you end up profiting on it? Yeah, that, that first one we profited about six six to eight thousand dollars. Oh, like okay. Realtor fees, holding costs. There you go. Supplies, yeah. So. And free housing. And free so housing. It's, like, yeah, it's almost like a house yeah, hack with a flip <laughs> combined. <laughs> exactly. That's like creative finance, pretty yeah, much. <laughs> exactly. It was amazing, dude. I loved it. Okay, loved so it. you you flip your first house, you make six k, mm -hmm. and then what happens? So then we we literally just went and bought five more houses. How did you get the money to buy all those houses? So I there's a company in St. Louis that's a hard money lender. They were absolutely incredible, and yeah. I have no idea why they lent it to me at the beginning. <laughs> um, and then uh, so you guys have the same strategy. You kind of eyeball yeah, it. You're exactly. Like, yeah, it's, this he's is gonna good. work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then um, and then I used private money. So that that was oh. one thing that that I did. So. In that time, I I had learned a ton. So like I knew the process. I knew how to do things from yeah. reading books, from reading Flip Your Future, from listening to podcasts. Yeah. And so um, I had put together a private money lender packet. 
Yeah. And I literally just made a list in my phone of all of the rich people that I knew. Really? Um, mm -hmm. And so I started having meetings with them and basically laying out the business plan of here's, here's what I'm going to do. Yeah. If I find a house, will you lend on it? And so I actually, when we start, money was one of the things that we never had a problem with. We had mm. people that trusted us, that, that gave us money, us, yeah. that liked us. Yeah. Um, might have been that as a pastor, I don't yeah. know, you know. So I'm like, <laughs> God's on my side, but uh, there you go. Um, but money was never a, an issue. It, was, it wasn't the, the hard money lending company was absolutely incredible to work with. We still work with them to this day. Who is uh, it? It's called Faster Funds. Faster Funds. Yeah, okay. Faster Funds. It's in St. Louis, and they're incredible. Um, okay. And so we use them, and we use private money. Got it. Okay, mm -hmm. so you bought five. You start flipping more houses. And then when did you transition from your wife being the GC to like hiring a crew and kind of like, yeah, that, or that, is she still the GC? No, no, we, we have a, we have a project manager now. Okay. Um, we probably, we were probably in it for about a year by the time Damn. we, we yeah, hired on a project. So manager. you, were you working on those next five? We didn't know. We, we hired out crews for those, but oh, she still managed those. Crews. Got it. Yes. Got it. But yeah, you only we, worked on the first one. We, yeah, we only worked on the first one. Got it. Since then, I have, I think I've power washed at the beginning. I would, I power washed a couple fences. Um, yeah. You know, you're like, this is stuff. probably the best. <laughs> exactly. <use of> my <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I didn't ever do any more work. She did some work. Oh, now, okay. So like, yeah. Especially at the beginning, because we, we didn't know what we were doing and yeah. I didn't. Like now we do new cabinets in every single house. Yeah, but yeah, at the yeah. beginning we were refinishing cabinets and she was there, you know, sanding them down, painting Damn. them, doing new hardware, stuff like that. That's yeah. that, I can't even do that. Yeah. So I couldn't even do that. Mm -hmm. I would probably like just straight paint them. I yeah. wouldn't even like <laughs> just sand them down. I'd be like maybe spray paint uh, a little and then just yeah. So so she she did some work on houses at the very beginning. Got but we it. had we had crews doing paint, floors, all that. Good Got stuff. it. Okay. And then walk me through how you scaled your business. So you bought the first, then you bought five, and then mm -hmm. how did you scale? Well, yeah. So the second one, um, excuse me. The second one that we bought, it the first one, everything went wrong. The second one, everything went right. We we, we actually did the Burr method on the second one where okay. we bought it for sixty seven. We put thirty into it. Yeah. We got it appraised at one fifty five. Our bank gave us an eighty percent, you know, loan to value yeah. appraise. And so we we pulled out like a hundred and fifteen, hundred and seventeen thousand dollars. So we were able to put twenty grand in the bank, still pay off our private money lender, plus have a house that was cash flowing. When we yeah. got done with that one, it was like this. This shouldn't be legal. Yeah, like, you're like, dude, I am a genius. <laughs> yes, like, I'm, this I'm is, the most amazing yeah, investor in the yeah. world. Dude, if I could just do this for another year, uh, exactly. I'm going to be great. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think that was the one where it was like, this actually works. Like, yeah. we, we have $30, $35,000 in, in equity in a house. It's cash flowing 250 bucks a month. We put 20 grand in the bank account. That It's, yeah. bit, you know, not free money, but kind of yeah. free money. Yeah. You know, Tax-free, it's yeah. in the form of debt. Um, and we just were all in after yeah. that hooked. Um, and so then I started buying houses. Um, mm -hmm. and then I got hooked up with, uh, which, you know, him, uh, an amazing investor in St. Louis, Sam, Sam um, Prim. Yeah. And so I started buying houses actually for him as an acquisition manager. Mm -hmm. or yeah. What? I started buying houses for him for about a year. Uh, okay. And I, I, that was, that was so helpful. So we were still buying for ourselves, but for Sam as well. Mm. Um, yeah. So I were you wholesaling it to <clears throat> Sam or were you working on his I team? I was working, yeah. I was working on his team. And he yeah. let you do your own deals mm -hmm. too? Yeah. So I had to, I had to rebuy them from, from oh, him. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, so okay. I don't know if you get... Yeah, so I, I would buy it, like, let's say... Because I, I used, um, you know, his... They, they had direct to seller marketing and all okay. that good stuff. And so was using, you know, him. Oh, so you would just buy from him to flip it yourself? So I would buy it, but it was under his umbrella. Oh, and so okay. then if we wanted it for ourselves, we had to pay him a, 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 a acquisition fee. fee. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so you started working for him. And, you're doing your own deals. Yeah. And that was amazing doing because I got to essentially like learn the process mm -hmm. through him. And they, you know, he was so helpful in that journey. Um, mm -hmm. And it was a great company to, to work for, but also didn't like paying the, 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 the fee. second fee on top of yeah. it to, to do our own deals. Um, and so then we started our own company. Got yeah. it. Okay. When did you start your own company? We started, so we started our own company. I mean, the entire time, cause we were still doing, you know, 50 of our own deals and, you know, 50, I think I bought like 70 houses for Sam in, in 2020. Yeah. In 2020. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, so we had our own company that entire time, but when we like went out on our own was in 2021. 2021. Mm -hmm. Got yeah. it. Okay. So, and then what did 2021 look like? 
2021 looked a lot like a lot of the same man we just we never stopped yeah. um yeah it was uh the golden years yeah it was amazing dude uh, and and i mean you you probably had this here but there we had a lot of really great hedge funds in st louis oh where, yeah everybody uh, was buying. I, I had their buy box and has had meetings with their acquisition manager of like tell me what your numbers are and i'll go find houses for yeah. you yeah so literally it was just buying houses left and right um, Got it. in 2021 we were wholesaling we probably we wholesaled way more in 2021 than we we flipped um, yeah we, we probably you know wholesaled 70 houses and flipped 30 or so okay um, so you did like 100 deals yeah yeah so Damn. we've done you know in the last you know three since 20 so it's almost four years we've probably done about 375 deals yeah jeez yeah, yeah. So, so 2021, you go solo, you do about a hundred deals. Mm -hmm. Do you know about how much you made that year? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like what'd you make? Uh, 1.4. 1. 1.4 1. million. Yeah. Jeez. Mm -hmm. yeah. So at this time you're probably like, I am I'm a freaking genius. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, dude, I am man. Yeah. Um, and then what happened in 2022? 2022. I mean, we we've continued to do the same. Th yeah. So oh, we're okay. we're buy, we're adding to our rental portfolio, and I think that was the that was the best thing that that we did was we kept adding to our rental portfolio. And yep. We were buying so cheap, and we were able to keep the the best for ourselves. And so mm -hmm. like that that was the most fun is tracking our our net worth over mm -hmm. time. Where mm -hmm. it was like we were adding on rental properties, and when we were done with them, we'd have a hundred grand in equity with them because we were able to buy so low. Yeah. Um, and so we, 2022, um, probably for the first seven, seven or eight months, we, mm -hmm. 2021 and 2022, we were very, very, um, focused on building our rental portfolio. Got it. Okay. Uh, then interest rates went up. Um, and we have still been building our rental portfolio, just not at the same Speed. scale that yeah. we were. So, and then how many rentals do you have right now? 51. 51. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you make. I think you told me yesterday you make about twenty five thousand dollars a month net from those fifty one mm -hmm. rental units. Yes, got it. Okay, yeah. so that's pretty good. Yeah, and the awesome. and the loan amount I think is only like three or four million. You said no, we're over that. Yeah, okay. we're we're over that right now. We're like right around six, six uh, a little million. over six. Yeah, but okay. we, we got about a, a little over twelve million. And okay, in so you're about like yeah. twelve, six million in debt, mm -hmm. but your portfolio is worth 12. Yeah. So you're technically a multimillionaire. Te right? Technically. I mean, it's on paper. Yeah. On, yeah. Paper, <laughs> on paper. So, um, and then you make about a million dollars a year mm -hmm. flipping yeah. and wholesaling. So that's it. You yeah. crushed it guys. That's, <laughs> that's the whole story. Yeah. But, um, okay. So before I want to, I want to get into the strategy uh -huh. of what exactly you're doing. Yeah. But first I want to talk about pivots yeah. because it's funny because Brandon Turner talked about pivot pivots yesterday. Mm -hmm. And when I had him on the podcast, I talked to him about pivots because mm -hmm. I remember, um, obviously, he was on Bigger Pockets. So I was just like, hey, like, you know, what was it like? Not when you left, but the months before it, mm -hmm. you know, the nights before it, the conversations with your wife before you yeah. decided to leave. Yeah. Right. So I guess walk me through some of the big pivots you've had to do in your life. I know the first one, the big one that I know you you were a pastor and you mm -hmm. want to transition to real estate. Yeah. So like, what did that decision look like exactly? Man, that's a great question. And, um, it was scary. One, because I, I didn't know anything about real estate and yeah. it, at that time I didn't really have a mentor in my life to, yeah. to coach me on that. I, I didn't. And so, um, I, my, my wife and I, we, we had a lot of conversations of like, what, what does that look like? And especially like, you know, to get, uh, maybe a little overly religious, like, but being a pastor, there was a part of me that felt like I was like, not, not turn. I, you know, I'm still, uh, believe in God, love God, love, love the church. Yeah. But there was a part of me that felt like You're doing the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing of like, yeah. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to chase money, which isn't the case. Um, yeah. it was not the case. My, my, what I love about real estate is we've been able to, to make money, to be able to turn around and, 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 help the world, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like, and, in, and in, in invest into the, the people and to our relationship and our kids relationship or my relationship with my kids. And so, um, but that was hard for me. I had to, I had to really work through that. You know? Yeah. Um, and so, uh, that, that was tough, but the, the one thing that, that kept popping up into my head to actually, there's two things. Um, one is like bet on yourself. Um, uh -huh. I, I had never really done that in my life where it's like, you know, I'm, I'm about to leave my job, which wasn't making a ton of money, but, and 
go into the unknown. Um, but I, I wanted to bet on myself. I wanted to, you know, I, I knew that I could do it. And so mm -hmm. I kept coming back to bet on, bet on myself. Um, and the second thing it was actually, and this goes back to like Brandon and Ryan and, and seeing all these people that mm -hmm. I'm listening to on podcasts that are mm -hmm. crushing it and reading books about people that are crushing it. And, um, and th this might sound arrogant. I don't mean it to, but my, my thought kept going back to somebody's doing it. Why can't it be me? Somebody's yeah. doing it. Why can't it be me? Yeah. And so, um, th those were two thoughts that kept popping into my head. Every time I got the, the, you know, this, these self-limiting beliefs or the, the, the going into like that fear cycle of like, I can't do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be successful. I don't know anything about this. Uh, I kept coming back to like other people have done this. Yeah. Like I, I can do this, mm -hmm. you know? And so that was super helpful. Mm. And, 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 and that time when we were going from kind of something that <clears throat> was more stable, um, yeah. wasn't completely stable, but more stable to the unknown. Yeah. Mm. So I had, um, kind of, I wasn't a pastor for sure. I was like the opposite of a pastor. Right. I was all messed up. And um, I uh, I was going to school for sociology, mm -hmm. and I was helping children at the time with personality disorders and mm -hmm. kind of learn like basic life yeah. skills. Um, but the problem was you don't make a lot of money yeah. when you're doing that. So I probably, I don't remember exactly, but let's say I was making $7 an hour. Mm -hmm. So I would have to drive to a child's house, right, mm -hmm. that was funded by Medicaid, work with them for two to three hours max. Mm -hmm. And then I would have to drive to another person's house and I didn't mm -hmm. get paid for the drive, oh, right? Yeah. Do that. So let's say I work six hours a day, right? Yeah. And then I would have to write a report on what happened with each kid and like, what are we, mm -hmm. what did we do? And then I had to write a report on the following week and I didn't yeah. get paid for that writing time. Uh -huh. And then I would have to write a lesson plan for yeah. each kid and then submit it. And then for it to get approved. And sometimes I would have to like fix it. Yeah. It didn't get paid for that either. And then I would also have to do trainings yeah. and I didn't get paid for that either. <laughs> Just, <laughs> and I was yes, like, like, dude, I made $37 a day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the hours of work. And then the problem was sometimes I would not the problem. One of the problems, mm -hmm a lot of these kids, they weren't being, um, treated right. Right. Mm, yeah. So they're usually lower income areas and stuff like that. So I'd go to a kid's house and let's say the kid's like, Hey, I didn't eat today. Yeah. Oh. All right. Well, I gotta, I'll take you go eat, you yeah. know? And then I just, oh I spent yeah, the money that, like, I just, uh, that I just did. And then yeah. I had one of my last clients, the mom would just always ask me for stuff. Yeah. And she'd be like, Hey, uh, our vacuum is broken. Can we go, uh, mm -hmm. to the, to the store to get a vacuum? Yeah. And I'm like, I, I can't do that. Like yeah. I gotta, I gotta work here. Oh, uh -huh. well then you gotta leave and come back, come back tomorrow because we have to go do this. Mm -hmm. I didn't get paid for that. Oh, right. Yeah. So it was, it was like that for a while. And then I had the same conclusion mm -hmm. that you, well, yes, a conclusion where I was like, okay, am I going to be poor for yeah. the rest of my life? Cause like I wanted to do that work and yeah. then I got into it and then I was like, I had a kid, I had mm. a mother, I had a support. I'm like, damn, yeah. I'm going to have to do something else. <laughs> yes. And, um, and eventually got into real estate That's similar amazing. to you. Dude, I love that. But, um, so you had that pivot. Was there any other hard pivots that you had to go into? Any other hard, p uh, what about leaving Sam? Yes, dude, that was, that was hard. I yeah. guess I made, I made a, a ton of money with Sam. He, he yeah. treated me so well. Um, yeah. And I, I loved it, but I knew that I couldn't fulfill my potential there. Um, yeah. Just, just doing acquisitions. Mm. Um, and I learned so much. Um, it, it yeah. was absolutely incredible. Yeah. Uh, incredible company to work for, do yeah. things the right way. Yeah. Um, but that, that was, that was harder. That was harder than leaving ministry. Um, really? Yeah, because leaving ministry, so one of the things that that I, you know, came up when we were like, hey, we're gonna leave this and we're gonna go into real estate was, um, what what if what if I do this for a couple years and I fall flat on my face? Like, yeah, I can go back. I can go make a job, get a job making, you know, $60,000 a year. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I could have done that. I was like, mm -hmm. and I'd be, we gave it a shot and didn't work out and now I'm back. When I was working for Sam, I was making, 
you know, close to half a million dollars a year. Damn. Yeah, dude. He, Sam, <laughs> <laughs> hit me up, bro. Dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, it, he was amazing. It was, and so that was that was harder for me stepping out in the unknown. But I also knew that with so my wife and I, which just is this is another kind of crazy story. When we left Denver to go to St. Louis, we sat down, we made a list of goals. Um, and some of them sounded absolutely insane, where it was literally like, we want to have a net worth of $5 million in five years. Um, and then the other one, one of them was we wanted to live in Hawaii in five years. Yeah. Um, and working with Sam, I probably could have gotten to that $5 million net worth. But um, I couldn't, I was I was an employee, you know? Yeah. I, I, I couldn't have moved to Hawaii. I couldn't have had the time freedom, even though, again, such a great company where I had a ton of flexibility. But um, I knew that to r- reach the goals that I wanted, um, it, it couldn't be with Sam. Mm. Um, even though it was an incredible company, it couldn't be with him. And so yeah. that was the hard part where it was like, yeah. I'm stepping out of a, comp- uh, a, a job that I'm yeah. making a ton of money in. Yeah. Um, and still like, in real estate and able to continue to buy real estate for us yeah. to go doing my own thing. Yeah. And that was really hard. Um, and that, that was really, really scary. Yeah. Um, but again, I, we had our, our vision for our future and for our mm-hmm. family and what we wanted mm-hmm. our life to look like. Yeah. And when I, you know, looked at working with Sam, it didn't match up with our future yeah. for our lives. And I think, um, I think a lot of people can relate because mm-hmm. like maybe you're making 500 K, but some mm-hmm. people are making a hundred K or 200 yeah. K and they have the benefits and they have this and they have their friends and mm-hmm. they have the comfortable paycheck. Um, and they know they want to do something else, but it's hard. Yeah. So Brandon, I had Brandon on the podcast mm-hmm. and he said the two most addicting things in the world are cocaine and a, predictable predictable paycheck yeah yeah so like uh, predictable paycheck and cocaine are the two most really addicting things in the world and it makes sense right because Mm -hmm. you know you're gonna get paid let's you Mm -hmm. make eight grand a month you know your mortgage is x you know you have this and Mm -hmm. you're like all right i'm gonna be good so it's it's addicting you don't why would you risk that yeah um so I guess, t- you know, I want to get real personal. Yeah. Like, talk to me about your conversations with your wife when you were thinking that you wanted to leave. Yeah. So I, I will say this, which y- y- my wife is 10 times better than I am. And I'm not just saying that because she's in this room. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but, she's a GC. She's yeah. a freaking um, accountant, but it dude, sounds like. <laughs> she has always been like, she is. she's been in it with me. She has like we're doing this together. I, mm. I believe in you. I trust in you. So if it was a different why she'd have been like, you know, I, I could you're imagine. Like, yeah, you're an idiot. You're, yeah, yeah. We're making so much money. Yeah. We, we bought our dream house on three acres, 5,000 square feet. Like Damn. everything is perfect in our lives. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, um, my wife wasn't like that at all. You yeah. Know, she was like, let's do this. Let's freaking go. And, um, so it was, it was hard. And I'm not going to act like there wasn't times where, uh, especially when when we left Sam, it, we had in our own company we had four employees. Um, uh-huh. We because we, we were growing that on the side while working with Sam. So oh, sorry about that. We had four employees. Oh, that's good. Um, we quickly grew that to to eight, nine, ten, um, and like that was hard because when I was with Sam, I I, I didn't know how to Lean. I didn't know how to manage people. Yeah. I didn't know how to to run a business. You, it was kind of like a a really great side hustle, yeah. you know, um, just a good sales guy. Yes. And so like learning how to run a business and to, to be a boss and to be a leader of a company yeah. was so hard. And honestly, it's not my, my gifting uh, is kind of like the, the visionary, but like the managing people, the integrator position that you kind of yeah. have to do when you're a, a small company. I was yeah. terrible at that stuff. Yeah. And there so were, was I. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm there like, were, what the hell is Podio? Exactly. Yeah. Where's uh, my login? <laughs> yes. Ex- ex- oh, believe me. Yeah. That, that all of that stuff <laughs> was so hard for me. And there were so many nights where I'm up at 2 AM in the morning, just stressed out. And like, oh, what yeah. am I doing? What did I get myself into? I had such a great life. I had, uh, you know, I had a very predictable, stable income with Sam. I had, mm. you know, it, and that was, that was hard that you, you, you learn a lot about yourself in those seasons. Yeah. Um, and uh, and w- what I love is like 
I was very comfortable. I, th- I, I, I love the, the concept of like making yourself uncomfortable because you grow yeah. as a person and a human being yeah. in those situations. Yeah. And so getting outside of Sam, um, was, was incredibly hard, but it mm-hmm. also, it taught me how to be a better leader. It mm-hmm. taught me how to be honestly a better husband and a better dad, because mm. I think when you're uncomfortable, you start to see things in your life where you're, you're quicker to anger. You're oh, yeah. quicker to, you know, you're, yeah. you, you, you might like, Oh, like I'm, I'm self, you know, I'm coping with doing X, Y, and Z. And, yeah. and like, so when you're uncomfortable, you start learning all of these unhealthy habits that you have that 100%. don't really pop up when you're in a really comfortable situation. Yeah. And so not only did it help me in the business side, but it helped me personally where, where I was able to see things in my life where like, I'm, I'm not a good person in this aspect of my life and I need to work on that. And so that's interesting. it was absolutely, it was such a, a incredible yeah. season, but I'm not going to act like it was an easy, easy. season. Yeah. There was so many nights where I was like, what am I doing? How long did it take from when you first started thinking you were going to leave Sam to when you actually left? Not long. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, we talked about this yesterday, yeah. messy and quick. That, that's, yeah. kind of <laughs> <laughs> that's our core value. That messy is, and quick. Yeah. That dude, I, I decide that I want to do something and, um, and I go for it. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of the same way. Yeah. It's weird. Cause I've, I've always been like that, but uh-huh. I'm, I'm 32 now. I'm not like old, mm-hmm. but the older that I'm getting, I notice that it's starting to slow down a little bit mm-hmm. where I'll think of a change that needs to be made and it's taking longer and longer. Mm-hmm. Have you been experiencing that or no? Um, n- not, not, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. How old well, are you? Th- I'm 32. 32. 32 okay. Yeah. When's your birthday? April 12th. Damn, I'm older than you. You're yeah. older than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm older than you. Good. My elder, man. My elder. I'm your senior, dude. Exactly. Uh, so I was born in March. But, March. Okay. Okay. Well. So let's talk about scaling a business. Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, what did you do to scale to getting to 100 deals a year? Yeah. Part part of it, um, I'm, not, I'm not the right person to ask for that. Uh, part okay. of it was just... I, I tell everybody who asked that question, it was just hard work. Um, when <laughs> when I when we decided we were going to do real estate, man, I was at every single meetup in St. Louis. I was going to meetups five nights a week, had my business card, was passing out my business card, scheduling three or four coffee meetings the next day with wholesalers, with real estate agents, with property management companies, sitting down, telling them I'm looking for deals. I was spending, you know, seven or eight hours in my car, going from appointment to appointment, coming back to my house, running numbers on them, analyzing them, sending out offers. I, w- I was working 14, 15 hour days every okay. day. And then. So you uh, focus a lot on acquisitions. Oh, acquisitions was my 100% my focus. And then. That is a huge thing that mm-hmm. most people don't get. Well, and, and the thing is, is like, dude, if you can, if you can get dialed in on acquisitions, uh, the flip is, it's not easy, but. It just happens. Yes. The, you're going to make just, money. Yeah. yeah. You're going to make money. If, if you can buy a property, right? You're going to make money on it. Yeah. And so that was my core focus, dude. As I, I focused, I was at every networking event. I was talking with wholesalers all day, every day, talking with agents all day, every day. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I just worked, I worked really, really hard. Mm-hmm. Um, now, as we've grown and uh, as we moved to, to, to Maui, like I've had to change that, you know. And yeah. so we've kind of implemented the EOS model where, you know, we've got, you know, uh, we've got people to, to essentially do all of that for us. And mm. so like right, right now, especially on the, on the, the rehab side, our project manager is the best in the world at what he does. Yeah. Um, he so is, what does your team look like? Break your whole team down. Yeah. So right now we've got, you know, we, we've got technically, so Revel City is the name of our company. So we have mm. Revel City Properties, okay. which is our, um, our holding company. company. Yeah. No, no. Th- yeah. That's wh- where we hold all of our, our rentals in. Okay. And we've got a, uh, property manager. Okay. We've got a maintenance tech. Um, okay. and then we've got a, a couple of VAs in that company. Got um, it. yeah, a couple of VAs we've got Revel city lending, which isn't, I mean, we just, we lend to our other businesses out of that business. Um, okay. yeah. Cause we've built up some income or some, some money to lend to our flipping business. Okay. Um, we've got Revel city home buyers, which okay. is our acquisitions business. Okay. We have Revel city flips, which is our flipping business. And then we have Cathcart capital, which is a, a fund to buy rental properties unleveraged in that we got just it. started. What's the difference yeah. between your acquisitions company and your flipping company? Yeah, because we we wholesale as well. Yeah. So if we're keeping it as a flip, it'll go into our, our flipping company. Got um, it. Yeah. So 
our Revel City Home Buyers, which is our acquisitions company, um, we've got lead manager, three acquisitions managers now, um, and a marketing manager, and then myself and that company. So that's just that's in purely the flipping company? in the flipping company. That's got just it. purely finding, finding houses, finding oh, deals. Okay, yeah. so three acquisitions manager. How do they get paid? What's the structure of their? Yeah, so they're they're paid off of commission. commission. Um, yeah, they're paid off of commission. So okay. we we do twenty five percent of the the profit. Okay, they that's, get yeah, that's a lot. And that it, honestly, I I took that from Sam. That's what, okay. Yeah, I got paid twenty five percent. So twenty five percent. And then uh, lead manager, is it a VA or is it like an American? No, it's an American. Yeah. yeah. So the lead manager is the person. So and I don't know if this is, we're, we're I mean, we've tested it. Um, they're the person that's sitting there. Uh, every time a lead comes in, they're answering the phones or they're getting back. Like if it's a, if it's a paper lead or something yeah. like that, they're immediately calling them, you know? Yeah. Cause it, cause what happens is somebody Googles need to sell my house fast and 20 websites pop up yeah. and they just go down the list. And so the second a lead comes in, we've got a KPI within three minutes. We're reaching back out to that person and setting an appointment got it. And, and getting one of our acquisitions guys over there. And so okay. what, what we love with the lead manager too is uh, especially on our, uh, the, the marketing, the paid marketing side of things is we, we call them the seller's advocate where honestly, they're not talking price with the seller. They're not talking, um, they're not talking numbers or anything with the seller. They're, they're basically just becoming team seller. And, and the, the reason we do that is because then acquisition manager, they go walk the house, make the offer, hopefully get it under contract. But if they don't get it under contract, then our lead manager steps back in and yeah. is able to really like, hey, call, call, call that seller and say, yeah. hey, you know, uh, Tony was just at the house. Like, what did you think about it? Yeah. Um, you know, it, what was his offer? At? And it kind of plays dumb. And then, you know, was that why, why didn't you like that offer? Is there anything I you know so just I, I following can do? Up following up, setting. but but all yeah, and also like it happens more than you think. Where they would say, well, yeah, the number was just a little bit low, or maybe it's not that, but maybe our acquisition manager didn't do a great job, like identifying the problem. You know, yeah. well, what is the pain point? And the lead manager is able to be like, well, was it was it the offer? And oh, no, the, the the number looked great, but we need to to find a new house to to live in before we accept any offer or. You know, we need uh, uh, to, to sell this house to get the money to go, you know, rent a property. And we were able to do all that stuff where they can stay in the house for you yeah. know, two months after closing, stuff like that. So they're able to identify those problems a little bit. So were you, what do you pay the lead manager? The lead manager is a salaried, like $40,000 a year or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. They, they get, they, they do get commission as well. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Depending on the deal. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's just for your flipping company. Uh, acquisitions Points. company. Acquisitions yeah. company. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then... So does your flipping company have other acquisition people or no, no those are the no, only ones yeah, that those are the only ones bring in deals yes. and then from there you figure out if you're going to flip it or wholesale it. Yes. Exactly. Okay. And then, so who does dispositions? Dispositions. We have a, a guy who does dispositions right now. I mean, we, we obviously have a buyer's list. Uh, his name's Justin that we've been working with. Um, but what we have been doing right now is we are, wholesaling a lot we we've oh, just so you're not really wholesaling a lot we we, uh, we still wholesale you know probably three houses a month um so but, justin's doing all that yeah but okay. more so than that we're we're closing and listing on the mls okay and then how does justin get paid he's just commission based commission based, commission -based was yeah. it like five percent or no um so on the on a on a wholesale it's 750 bucks on okay. um on a like a, a clean and list or wholesale, he he's the agent on those. Oh, properties. okay. Yeah, so he gets paid as as the agent on those. Got properties. it, but yeah. not like a full commission. Uh, no, not a full no. commission. Got yeah. it. Okay. And he's also the agent on our flips as well. So, okay. So he so. he makes he makes a decent amount of money from all of the flips that we do and from the wholesales that we do. Got it. So three acquisition, lead manager, disposition, mm -hmm. and then who does marketing? Marketing, uh, uh, uh girl named Melissa. Um, okay, she's my sister. Melissa. She's my sister-in-law. Shout out uh, yeah. to the sister-in-law. She's amazing. <laughs> she's, she's, so she did, uh, she did marketing, um, for, uh, 
the, in the corporate world for a long time. Got it. And now is working with us. Yeah. So when you say marketing, what exactly does she do? So she does all of the behind, like, so like right now we're doing, we're doing, we're revamping our podio um, right now. And so she's in charge of that. I hate yeah. it. Absolutely. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. make sense to me. Do you have a like, login? <laughs> yeah, I do have a yeah. login. I don't know what it is. But, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have one. They said I do, but I, don't I get know. tagged on things yeah. every once in a while. But, yeah. You have a, yeah. a million tasks. You're like, yeah. what is this? Yeah. So she, she's done our marketing. She's doing, you know, helps with branding, helps with our website. She kind of does everything. Yeah. Okay. So Podio, I guess, build out she does. Uh, we paid a company, but she we, was just in charge. She of manages. That. Yes. And then what type of marketing do you guys actually do? Yeah. Paper lead, cold calling, um, paper lead, cold calling, direct mail, little SEO. Um, and then, you know, we talked about this, a little texting, but okay, not, not, not a lot. Yeah, and then not a lot. You also do wholesalers and agents, right? Or no? Yeah, but that that's our acquisition manager's role. Okay. Yeah. So okay. we've got a full on program. Like when an acquisition manager comes in, that that is our bread and butter is connector leads. Connector but, leads. Yeah, that's what we call them. We call them connector leads, and that is uh, it for anybody that watches this. I think that you can only focus on connector leads and still make a million dollars a year. Oh, you can for um, sure. Yeah. And that's that's wholesalers, that's real estate agents, it's like getting pocket listings, some things they don't want to bring in the market. That's senior living, that's probate attorneys, uh, that's property management companies, that's junk removal companies, mold remediation companies. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the, just your, your personal network. I think everybody, everybody, if they look at their personal network and they let people know what they're doing, they can buy three or four houses a year just off of somebody that a high school friend that's aunt just passed away. The family wants to sell the house. It's too dirty to take the market. They don't want to fix it up. And they remember, Oh, Cameron buys houses. I, I that happens all the time. Yeah. I just bought a house two weeks ago where it was a high school friend that I hadn't talked to in 12 years, but he saw on Facebook that I buy off market houses Yeah, and he reached out to me about a house. So let's teach people how to make a million dollars a year on connector leads. Yeah. So what do you do with your acquisition team when they first start? Like, yeah, to do the connector. Leads so thing? I, I will tell you how to make a million dollars a year with connector leads. The very first thing that I would focus on is wholesalers. Okay. Whol wholesalers is your bread and butter. And I know everybody hears the word wholesalers and they think sketchy. They think New gonna shop the, yeah, they're going to, going to shop the property too high. Um, and, and I agree with that, yeah. but the reason they think that is because they have not built relationships with those wholesalers. They're, you know, when, when they get shopped a property via an email blast or see Text, it on Facebook, yeah. um, that wholesaler has already shopped it to his core buyers and they all of passed course. on it. Yeah. And then, and so it's like, how, so I'm telling my, like, how are you the first person that a wholesaler calls when they, when they walk a property? How, how are you the first person that they think of? And that, that's the entire model that we've built yeah. in our company is, is you build relationships. People are going to sell to you if they like you and they trust you. Yeah. And so we are a company that's built on trust. We do what we say we're going to do every single time. Yeah. Um, and we're a company that loves people. Like we, yeah. we want to take care of our wholesalers. I've spent tens of thousands of dollars buying wholesalers gifts just to, to build relationships. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I, I, you know, if I get a good deal and, and I make a bunch of money on it, that wholesaler is going to Cancun for the weekend or they're getting yeah. a new computer or a new parish. Like that's just, it, I'm, I'm building yeah. that relationship with them. Yeah. So we have a KPI in our company. Um, it's how many wholesalers know, like, and trust us. Mm -hmm. So there's a difference yeah. between a wholesaler that just sends you deals yes. and then a wholesaler that knows, likes, and trusts. So, Cause if they know, like, and trust, they mm -hmm. should call us first. They should, they'll tell us what the offers are. Yeah. Like we have that. If, if a wholesaler tells me, send my highest and best, do you know what I tell them? <laughs> go pound sand. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Don't ever call yeah, me again. Yeah, dead to me. <laughs> I hope you freaking, yeah. I love it. <laughs> don't ever. Yeah. And I make it clear too. I'm, I, I, I make it so abundantly clear yeah. too. When they kind of cross the line, I'm like, Hey bro, like, if that's how you want to play, I respect it. Like, yeah. make your own. But don't ever call me again. Yeah. Don't come to my office. Don't come to our meetups. Like, you want to run your business like that? I respect it. Yeah. Like, you want to squeeze every dollar? I understand it. Mm -hmm. But I want to work with people that want to work with me. Yeah. And and <clears throat> usually they'll 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 mm -hmm. be like, all right, I can respect that. I'll I'll be yeah. fruit. I'll, I'll I'll be fair and and mm -hmm. open and honest. 
And if they don't, that's fine too. Yeah. Well, we have a saying in our company, don't, don't step over a dollar to pick up a dime. And I think wholesalers should have that same exact philosophy where it's like, there are times where, you know, like we, we could beat a wholesaler down and, and get it for two grand less, but like, is that worth the relationship no. over the next five years where we're going to yeah. make $500,000 to a million off of them, off of one deal and ruining that relationship? And same with the wholesaler. Yeah. And I think that they believe that with us where it's like, we do what we say we're going to do. We're trustworthy. We, we, we're, we have their best interests in mind. And yeah. so like, there's a lot of fruitful relationship there. And so how, how, like I teach my acquisitions managers is go to every meetup. Yep. Like literally get on Facebook. I, every every large market has multiple Facebook communities that you can mm-hmm. get in and you can go down the list and just see people posting deals. And those aren't good deals, but that wholesaler could be a great connection. So make yeah. these lists, call them, set up coffee meetings, go go just build relationships. And then we kind of have it divided up into, you've got your platinum wholesalers, which yep. are the ones that are bringing you deals multiple times a week. Those are the ones that you're talking to literally yeah. almost every day. Yeah. You've got your gold that are you might be buying five houses a year from. Those are people yeah. you're talking to once a week. You've got your silver. Those are people that you buy two or three houses from a year. Yeah. You're talking to them once a month. And then you've yeah. got your your bronze, which are like the the one offs that you might not ever get a deal from. Yeah. You might get one deal a year off of them. Like new those are thing. your yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the people you're reaching out to quarterly. Yeah. And so we've got KPIs set up for all of that. What are the KPIs? Because that's actually an interesting model. <clears throat> yeah. So so we meetups. That that I I'm a huge believer in meetups. I think, and maybe it's just my personality. I'm a really high eye on the disc. Like I, I love people. I do my best face to face. And I think that with our acquisitions guys, where it's like, that's how you build trust is, is you meet people face to face. And so we want uh, all of our acquisition managers to go to a meetup once a week. Then okay. we have one-on-ones, which is, is a coffee or a lunch. Um, and so we want, like, it kind of starts the meetup. You, you go to the meetup, you meet people, you schedule one-on-ones from there. We want them to do five one-on-ones a week. From there, everything else takes care of itself. Where That's it's it. like, yeah, it's well, I mean, we, we have more KPI. Like, we want them to buy a house a week. That doesn't yeah. really happen, but yeah. all the time. But we we want to put in, you know, um, we want to put in ten offers a week. Um, yeah, ten ten off ten offers per acquisitions. Got it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But so, ten it, offers for <clears> one person that seems very low. Uh, well. Yeah, it, we, I mean, we, we buy a house every 10 offers. That's kind of, we kind of like worked our way backwards. And is that from wholesalers or that's from? That, that's agents? that's across the board. That's across the board. Yeah. So um, like, honestly, pay, paper leads going to be a little bit lower than that when it's yeah. direct to seller. But yeah. um, with with agents, it's so so we have a de- complete different like model with agents because um, with wholesalers, I think it's like uh, you build relationships and because because they're seeing deals all the time with agents my entire philosophy is we cast a wide net with agents Mm -hmm. because agents aren't out there looking for distressed properties they might come across them but they're not actively looking for them yeah so with agents it's completely opposite where it's like we're just going to take build a list of 2,000 agents in you know st louis and then we're going to put them on a drip email blast every single week yeah and and we're going to get very clear with hey here's what we're looking for this is exactly what we're looking for we put our buy box in that email yeah and then we'll send that out and we get a ton of leads from there um and then a a a huge thing with agents is like we're going to coach them on when they send us a deal we always want to get back to them and we're going to coach them on why that deal doesn't work Mm -hmm. so what we're basically doing is hopefully you know over time when they come across a deal that does work for us, they immediately know this deal works for Rebel yeah. City, and they're going to reach out to us with that deal. So we buy, we buy, you know, twenty five to thirty houses a year from agents. Got yeah, it. Yeah. So I love working with agents. Um, okay. But we don't have. I mean, in our business, we don't have an agent that we're buying, you know, ten houses from a year. It's it's typically like one or two. yeah, one or two a, yeah. uh, a year. So that's why it's like cast. We do have wholesalers that we're buying ten houses a year from. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. What about, so what percentage of like the hundred deals you do a year are connector leads versus direct to sellers? Oh yeah. I would say, I would say 65 to 70% are connector leads. 65 to 70. Damn. So most of them. Oh dude. Yeah. We, we do way more volume off of connector leads. What about how much are you spending on marketing a month? And then how much like ROAS are you bringing in? Ooh. That's a great. We're we're spending right now, and I'd have to talk with Melissa. We're probably spending. We're spending four thousand. Right now, we're probably spending like sixteen thousand dollars a month. Okay. Yeah, on 
on marketing. That's not uh, bad. Yeah, it's not. Uh, and we're bringing in off of that. Dude, I don't know my numbers well enough to, to be put on the spot like that. Um, you know, average at all or like yeah, what you're shooting for? Yeah. Usually people want like a three or four row as. Yeah, we're, we're better than that. Um, but I don't know exactly where we're at on that. Got it. Yeah, I don't what know would where you we're guess? at. I think for <coughs> for every dollar we spend, because it's different, for every dollar we spend in pay per lead, we're getting about a 4x return. Okay. For every dollar we spend cold calling, we're getting about an 8x return. How much are you spending on cold calling? Can you just break that down? Yeah, cold calling we're spending. So I've got a, a really cool like partner with cold calling. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, he's not a partner, but he's somebody that we're working with where he's get, he's developed this amazing, um, system where he's got a team of VAs. So, so we'll buy a list, um, and he'll go through that list. His VAs overseas will, will call those lists. Um, and essentially the very first time that they're calling them, they're just determining it. Hey, does a person answer their phone? Yeah. Like, Cause that we, I'm a firm believer that when we cold call, um, we want somebody that's local calling, but we yeah. don't want to pay somebody that's local to sit and make calls and get a 1% pickup rate, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so he's calling and it's just, do they answer their phone? So he's got all of these stats behind it where it's like, if you answer your phone within four calls, you will answer your phone within, you know, four calls 95% of the time. Okay. If you don't answer your phone within four calls, you will not, like, it, honestly, it sounds dumb. There's phone picker uppers and there's people that don't answer their phone. Yeah. Um, and you're either one or the other. And so essentially he's going through that. He's determining with, with VAs, does the data match and do they answer their phone? Mm -hmm. From there, we take that list and then we, we pay somebody um, that's boots on the ground that knows St. Louis to call the people that answer their phone and the data match. And the reason that we do that is because then they're able, I mean, we're, we're, we're such a, we play the local investor card. Yeah. I grew up in St. Louis. Uh, that St. Louis is a very tight knit community and St. Louis is the, the popular question when you meet somebody is where'd you go to high school? Yeah. Cause you can always make a common connection where it's like, yeah. so we get a lot of deals that way where it's like, Oh, I went to, you know, Francis Howell and you know, Oh, my nephew went to Francis Howell. What yeah. year was he? Or like, yeah. you know, my dad went to Lindbergh. My mom went to Fox. We, we make connections like that all the time. Yeah. So that's why we, we think it's really important to have somebody that's local making those cold calls for us. And how much do you spend on cold calling a month? Yeah. So I pay uh, probably about $4,000 a month on that. That's yeah. including the American? That's, in, that's including the American. Yeah. Got mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Okay. And then so, where do you get your data from? Uh, data, that would actually be the, I think he's pulling lists from everywhere. He just Oh, what's the company that he's using now? Uh, it's a guy. Batch. No, guy. we've used Batch leads before. Yeah. Um, we've used List Source before, but he is he. What I love about him is he's the, the person that I'm working with. Is he's trying to build a company out of this, so he's kind of beta testing it with me. So oh, okay. right now we're we're experimenting with just what different levers do we pull? Like, you know, a uh, uh, high equity list doesn't work great with cold calling. We found yeah. out, but uh, a vacant list works a lot better. Yeah. with cold calling, it's hard you know? Stress, yeah. yeah. So we're, we're just, we're trying to figure that out of like what, what, what works. So like, yeah. for instance, um, the high equity list, uh, out of every 200 contacts or like actually live calls, we yeah. would get, we'd get like one lead out of that Got the it. high equity list with the, the vacant list out of every 50 contacts, we get one lead out of that. Got so, it. Um, so we're, we're working on that right now, just like pulling what, what levers do we need to pull? How do we stack these lists yeah. to get that number down? And so he's, he's eventually going to take this that he's beta testing with me and bring it to the market. Um, hopefully is his goal. So he's doing a lot of this for, for cost for okay. us. Got yeah. it. So now I want to transition to what does it take to scale a business as a leader? Yeah. So I know like for myself, when I was. I made a million dollars a year with a super small team. Mm -hmm. Like I'm talking about like me and a TC or me and like an acquisition person. Yeah. But then scaling to where there's like five, 10, 15 people. And then there's people that are just like doing stuff for you, not you doing everything and then mm -hmm. getting support is completely different. Yeah. So like, what were your, some of, what, what were some of your strengths and challenges as a leader? Yeah, their strengths, not, not many, unfortunately. <laughs> I haven't found one yet. I wish, yeah. I wish there were more. So I am a person, you know, and we talked about this earlier, like mess, messy and quick. Like yeah. I, I, I run a million miles an hour. I get an idea and it's the best idea in the world, according to me, and yeah. want to do it. Um, 
And I don't really think through the ramifications of it. I don't think yeah. of like, how is this actually going to work on paper? Um, and I struggle with that. Like yeah. that, that's, that's who I am in some. So I, I, in our team, we need really great integrators. We need really great people that are basically able to take that vision and run with it. Um, and so we've been working on that. We've been, we've been kind of dialing that in, but, but we struggle with that. That's the hardest part in our business. And one thing that we've implemented that has been so helpful is that we, all of our employees take the disc assessment. Are you guys yeah. familiar with the disc assessment? No, we used a predictive index. Here. Predictive index. So, so sim similar. Um, but for that's been a, a lifesaver for me because okay. I'm a very high DNI, which means I'm driven. I love people. I'm a very low S and C, which means that I don't really care about the details at all. And I, I lack follow through, um, yeah. honestly. Oh, and okay. So, and so, uh, like I get super excited about something Start it. I'm a really great starter, but uh, the, the, the finishing is something I'm on to the next thing, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, we've implemented that in our business and it's been so helpful because for instance, our, our project manager, um, he's a very high S and C, mm -hmm. which means like you tell him like, Hey, this is what we need. This is kind of the, this is the goal. This is what we're looking for. Um, you tell him what to do and he is going to do it and he's going to do it perfect every single time. Mm -hmm. Um, when we first brought him on and even still to this day, uh, I struggle with, you know, my personality type is like, throw me to the wolves and, and I'll figure it out. And he's completely different from that. And so like learning just the way that people work and the way, what I say, I'm learning how to communicate with people the way they want to be communicated with. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's been really helpful in our business. And, and that's, you know, <clears throat> there was a, um, a saying that I live by when we were first scaling, which is like, get the right people on the bus and then you can figure out the seat. Um, I disagree with that now. It's like, you know, you got to figure out the right seat on that bus when you bring them on. Cause if not, they're not going to be around. Mm. And so that is uh, that's a, that's a goal with our businesses. When people come on, we get them in the right seat. We get them in a position where they're doing what they were made to do. Mm. Um, you know, I, I'm not made to, to send emails and worry about the details. Um, mm -hmm. And so, but some people love that stuff and that's what they want to yeah. do all day, every day. And so finding people to kind of support our strengths and we can support their, their strengths and also support my weaknesses and I can support their weaknesses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so I guess like, Walk me through, I guess, your hiring process mm -hmm. and disc assessment <clears throat> process. Yeah. So, dude, and, and all of these things, like, we're, we're still, we're building the plane as we're flying it. Yeah, you know? yeah, so, yeah. so for all <laughs> of this, like, I'm not a professional yeah, at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am not any a professional means, hire do by not, any way. Yeah. Do not take this and be like, this is what Cameron does. Yeah. I, it could be completely the wrong way. Yeah. Um, but typically, like, I, I identify somebody where it's like, hey, you know, just... Again, going to meetups and through relationships, this person mm -hmm. is somebody that would fit our culture, would, would fit really well on our team. And mm -hmm. that, that's kind of the first process. They, they pass the eye test. Um, yeah. Once they pass the eye test, then it goes to uh, some just conversations. What would it look like for you to be on our team? Mm -hmm. And then, then always it's a more of a structured like, hey, here, take the disc. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to go over that. We're going to look at the disc. And then we're going to sit down for an interview. We're going to lay out like mm -hmm. what, what does this job look like? And also... I think one of the things that's really important is give them a detailed, like, here's what your day looks like and your week looks like. Mm -hmm. So there's no, you know, there, there's one of the things that I've struggled with as a leader is just going with the flow um, and not setting expectations um, yeah. and, um, and not setting measurables, you know, and mm -hmm. one of a, a business coach that we have, he, what he always tells me is you, you can't manage what you don't measure. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's important and it's eye opening for me because I'm, you know, we're talking about KPIs and like, we're still building out our KPIs in our business mm -hmm. and they're changing all the time because, <laughs> oh boy. yeah, they're, they're changing all the time because I, but I you that's probably have just, some good ones. we, we do. Um, but that's just not, that's not my personality. You know, mm -hmm. I, it's not my personality type. And so we're, we're trying to dial that in. And especially, you know, now that we've kind of removed ourselves from the day to day in the business and are living in Maui, um, having all of these systems and processes in order has been super, super helpful. Also, my wife is the one who honestly does most of that. So yeah. Dude, you just got lucky. Yes. I'm a super <laughs> lucky guy. There's no doubt about it. I'm, that's what I tell you. Hey, if, if we've been able to do it, any, yeah. anybody can do it. Yeah. Cause I am, I'm not that great in a lot of ways. That's so. funny. Um, um, I think for me, so I used to be very, uh, 
straightforward mm -hmm. and almost abrasive. Mm -hmm. Like I haven't said that word in a long time because <laughs> I got better mm -hmm. at it. Because before I would be like, my, it was just bad. But like yeah. my leadership style would be like, hey, like, why didn't you do this? <laughs> like, <laughs> just, why did yeah. you do this? Yeah, yeah. You're fired. You're yeah, not. yeah. Not even you're fired. Like, uh, like uh -huh. why didn't you do it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you need to do that. Okay. All right. And that was it. That was like mm -hmm. my leadership style. It was like, hey, you need to get deals. Okay. One week later, why haven't you got any deals? Yeah. Like, that's it. Like, literally um, just like <laughs> so straightforward and kind of <clears throat> like just expecting people to just know. Yes. Like, oh, why didn't you like send the contract right after? Mm -hmm. Well, it's like they didn't know. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And it sounds, it sounds like obvious, true, but. but like a lot of stuff like that where it's like they had no idea. And then there was like where when we scaled and there started to be layers before mm -hmm. it was like me to salesperson. Yeah. And now there was like me to sales manager to salesperson. Mm -hmm. And that was a completely different dynamic because then I had to stop going to the salesperson or taking everything out on the salesperson. And then I had to start understanding like, okay, well, if the salesperson is underperforming, did the sales manager give them everything, mm -hmm. clear good. KPIs, clear scripts, clear training, clear uh, training on how to use the, the dialer, the contracts, like, the all the everything yes so that was a whole nother dynamic that i had to like learn um mm -hmm. and then you know being like less abrasive less straightforward but then having like and then i've done the swing where i was too nice mm -hmm. and then i wasn't holding people super accountable and i would like hear a lot of excuses and i would kind of like go with it yeah and then eventually i had to like kind of swing back the yeah. other way yeah. so i've kind of done both that's fun you and i are a lot of like in one way where it's the i'm 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 that way where it's yeah. like buy houses that that's yeah. that's what i want you to yeah do. i just want you to buy a house exactly. a week. it's not rocket science guys well, well and yeah. i think i think part of that's probably because it's the the personality that we have like yeah. if you give me like here's the goal like cameron go make a million dollars i'm gonna i'm gonna figure that out yeah. if you say go buy houses i'm gonna figure that out i don't need systems in place i don't need like yeah and so i I have a propensity to manage the way that I want to be managed. Yes. Um, and it, it's a terrible, terrible flaw. Probably freedom. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but my other issue is I've got this belief um, that I think helps uh, most of the time, but it's I, I always mm -hmm. believe the best in people and they're the best case scenario for people. Mm -hmm. And so I am, I'm very bad about calling people out like oh, really? I, it, but then it, it gets unhealthy because then i build up resentment in my head yeah. you without hope saying it. exactly I'm, I'm like i'm <laughs> building up resentment of like i can't believe they didn't do this but i don't say anything because i'm like they must you know something's going on you know yeah and and i, I think that's that's something i've gotten better at is like oh. when, when i see something happening that's not going the way that i, I would like it to go I, I have to have that conversation mm -hmm. you know the the what is it you'd rather rather cut off the, the toad in the way, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. figure it out quickly before it gets to a point where it, it could be a, a really bad situation, yeah, you know, yeah. employees. So, so I have, I, in the beginning too, it was very much like someone would be underperforming. Mm -hmm. I knew they weren't in the right seat. Yeah. Weeks would go by and I'm just like, Oh my God. Like yeah. I know that I know it's bad, but I'm too much of a pussy to fire. <laughs> yes. I'm too, yeah. I'm too oh, much. Yeah. I'm so soft. Um, but now what I do is like right away, I'll call something out. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, um, let me think. We had like a setter mm -hmm. um, and um, just like with KPIs, like set closes, he yeah. didn't have any. Mm. And then after two weeks, it was like, OK, well, every time I talked to him, it was like, yeah, you know, this one next week. And oh, this one, you mm -hmm. know, is working on. But nothing was like closing. Yeah. So then what I started to do was just performance plans. Mm -hmm. And I'd, I'd say like, all right, brother, so this is the goal. So mm -hmm. this week you need to call, we'll say 200 people. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see in the dialer right here, 200 people. You need an hour, two hours of talk time. That's 10 hours yeah. a week. And you have to close three. Yeah. Okay. And I'll literally write it on the board like, 10 hours of talk time, 200 dials a day, three closings. Do you think you could do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Love perfect. That. Okay. Do you have the script? 
Okay. Do you know how to use? Okay. Let's listen to some calls. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll and then I'll, I'll leave the conversation. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. At the end of the week, today is Monday. You need to do this by Friday. Mm-hmm. If you don't do this by Friday, then we're going to have to move positions or potentially let you go. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And then, and that. now on Friday, it's right there. <laughs> like, hey, did you do this? Did you do it? Yeah. Yeah. And then it sucks because I've had people <clears throat> like still kind of yeah. like the one guy, one guy, it took like an hour and a half to fire him because he <laughs> just kept like, he was like, Brian, you're making the biggest mistake. <laughs> like, uh, and I was like trying to play cool on that. At the end, I just roasted him. But like, <laughs> But but now with uh-huh. every single role, I'll I'll, I'll be straight up be like, hey, ad buyer, you need to have mm-hmm. a three row ads. Yeah. Do you understand that? Do you understand what three row ads is? Let's figure it out. <laughs> this is what you need to spend. This is this. Mm-hmm. Like, let me know. Do you think you could hit this or not? Mm-hmm. If they can't, why not? If they mm-hmm. can, okay, I'm gonna hold you to it. And then there's an exact date that we that. are going to cross that bridge, yeah. and. Yeah. No, I, I love that. That's so, yeah. One of the things that we've said in our business uh-huh. is um, if we don't give them the, the tools to succeed, that that's our problem. But if we have given them the tools and they still don't succeed, then it's a capacity issue. Exactly. Um, yeah. And there have been times where we failed the person. Yes. Um, but what I've learned from a mentor too is after 90 days, mm-hmm. if that person's not successful, even if it was our fault. Yeah. And for some reason, it's not turning around. We got to still let them go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's the, that's so, that's why KPIs, going back to KPIs, are so important because yeah. we know in our business that, you know, for every meetup you go to, you should walk away with 20 connections and five one on ones scheduled. Mm-hmm. From those five one on ones, you should get X amount of leads. From those leads, you should be walking X amount of houses. From those houses that you walk, we should be putting X amount of offers. From X amount of offers, you should be buying X amount of houses. Yeah. And so, it, but for us, you know, in, in any house buying company, the most important thing is the the profit that you're making, but also the houses that you're buying because yeah. that's how we make money. And so if we can look back and they've done everything, but they're not buying houses, then it is just a capacity issue. It's where you, you this, you're just not cut out for this. Yep. Some people are, some people aren't. Yeah. Where when we've had great people um, that, just can't buy houses. They, they, they're smart. Yeah. They're not set up Their Their, their disposition isn't somebody that buys houses, you know? Yeah. And so they can do great things in other aspects of, of real estate, but they're not a house buyer. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately our company isn't to the point where it's like, we've got all of these open positions where we can move them. They just aren't going to be on our team anymore. Yeah. It doesn't mean that they're a failure just in that particular position. It didn't work out. What normally does it take um, when you're interviewing for a salesperson mm-hmm. for you to say, Hey, this is a good person. <clears throat> yeah. So this goes back to the disc. Um, mm-hmm. and I, I want the high D and the high I trait. High D and high I. Yeah. So a, a D is an incredibly driven person. High I is incredibly outgoing, wants to be around people. Mm-hmm. Um, which it also sucks because they're a low S and C, which means that they're not going to be updating Podio. That means that they're yeah. not going to be following up the way that I want them to, which is why we have a lead manager to help them with that. Mm-hmm. But the high D, cause we do all of our closes in person. We're not, we're not over the phone. We go walk every single house. Yeah. We sit down with the seller. We, you know, sit down with the wholesaler, talk with the wholesaler. We do everything in person. We don't buy houses without walking them. Um, and that takes the high I and the high D. And then also we're, we pay our acquisition managers off of commission. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, that'd be it, motivating. If, yeah, that's the, so they have to have that. Um, and, you know, uh, have talked with a lot of companies that hire literally off the disc and it's the high D, the high I that mm-hmm. is the best salesperson. Um, that does create though problems when they're also really terrible at a lot of other things, you know? Yeah, 100%. Um, but that's what we're looking for is somebody yeah. that, that loves people. And then more so than anything in our company, you you have to have integrity. Um, and yeah. I think that's what is integrity? Company. Integrity is doing what you say you're going to do. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's loving people. It's caring about people. Um, if you, you know, if you sit down with me and you tell me, you know, typically we only hire within the industry. So it's people that have been doing it, you know, on their own that we're bringing onto our team or Interesting. People that were, yeah, Most people say, don't do that. 
Yeah. Um, that's what we've done. I don't know if it's the right thing, you know, um, I don't know if it's the right thing, but we've hired within the industry. But part of that is, you know, it is like walking houses, comping ad comping houses, putting together a rehab budget, like all of those things take a lot of reps to get good at, you know, and I I don't want to spend the time like training somebody to do all of that at this, at this point of our, our business. Um, and so I, I say that to say though, but if, if, I've ever heard of you being dishonest or if I've ever heard of you uh, screwing somebody over, whether it's the seller or the person that you're selling it to, like you're, you're not in my network anymore. Um, Got it. You know, I had a, a, a deal that um, it was a wholesale that I had worked with a decent amount mm-hmm. and he brought me this great deal and it was at a great price. Mm-hmm. And I was talking with him um, about how he got it so low and he was bragging to me that um, the house had foundation issues in a great part of town, amazing house. And mm-hmm. he was bragging to me that he had convinced the seller that the house was a teardown because of these foundation mm-hmm. issues. Um, it was not a teardown. It probably needed 30K in peers, whatever, not mm-hmm. a teardown. And I literally texted him back and I said, hey, man, I'm out on this house and I'm never working with you again. Damn. Please, please lose my number. Because that's just not that's not how we do business. Yeah, you just don't want to lie. Yeah, we're a, a win-win scenario. We believe yeah. it needs to be a win for the seller. It needs to be a win for us. It needs to be a win for the end buyer, whether that is somebody else that's going to flip the property or, or the person that we're selling it to. So we want to have integrity when we do our flips and not do the, the cheap thing. Like We want win-wins across the board. Yeah. What, so what about... What about, so for me, mm-hmm. I've noticed that great salespeople are, I almost want to say born. They're not like mm-hmm. made. Yeah. Like even for, for wealthy investor, for my flipping and wholesaling company, there's there's always been someone that walks in the door and they just crush it. Yes. And you're like, what the hell? <laughs> and then you're almost shocked. You're like, how are you doing this? Yeah. Like, what's going on? And then you have other people come in and they're they're smart. They, mm-hmm. they might have the look, they might have the drive, but for some reason they can't just like figure it out. Yes. And I think, um, that's why with salespeople, I'm kind of more cutthroat. Yeah. Um, because I, I, I've just seen it so many times where I'm like, you know what, this person's struggling. I'm going to take them under my wing yeah. and I'm going to pour into them. I'm going to bring them to my house. Yes. I'm a freaking do whatever it takes. <laughs> like they're somehow related to me or something. Yeah. And then someone else just walks in. I had a guy one time, he was a barber that uh-huh. like, he, he just spoke so bad. Like when he would speak <laughs> to him, he just so much slang, so much like, Oh yeah. yeah like had an accent, but for some reason he could buy he houses, was, he could buy houses yeah, for sure. That. And it was annoying. Cause sometimes I'm like, what are you saying to these people? <laughs> and he's uh, like, no, I told him like, you know, we're the best and just, we would for sure close. Yeah. I'm it's like, amazing. that's it. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. But dude, you're so, I mean, it is because people ask me all the time, like uh, I, I got really great at buying houses mm-hmm. and they're like, what, what's your process? How do you do this? How do you? And, and I, for me, I, it's hard because I don't have a, a process. Like I've obviously done like Steve Trang's course and a guy named John Martinez and, and learned like all, all of that. But I, I don't you like I'm just going in there and I'm being myself and I'm, I'm caring for the person Mm -hmm. and I'm trying to buy the house and it works, you know? So I don't, yeah. And and I think that people just have, they either have it or they don't. Yeah. So you're so right with salespeople. It's it's something that is seen pretty quickly. Like you, you, you have, you have the it factor or you don't when it comes to sales. Yeah. Especially great salespeople. Yes. And and that's, you know, that's what I was saying. You know, you can be an incredible human being, incredibly smart, articulate, and you might not have it. Yeah. And so you're not a salesperson on our team anymore. Yeah. That doesn't mean that you're not a great human being. Yeah. Just not a salesperson for us. How do you buy houses? Hmm, how do I want to ask this? Um, when you're buying a house, <clears throat> how do you get them way below market value? Yeah. So, so I think with that, um, that is I- identifying the problem. Um, okay. because very rarely, I, I shouldn't say very rarely, but a lot of times that the price is not the only thing, you know, mm-hmm. and every sales, you know, trainer teaches this where there's yeah. different pain points. And so, um, I, I've got an entire process built out on it. And so, uh, 
I'll share it because I think it's super important. But it's it's based upon the disc. It, it, it so I love the disc. You I love that. I freaking love the disc, the disc yeah. man. I love the disc. I would love to see when he first train. seen it. He's like, this is <laughs> oh crazy, my, dude. I see. It's so funny. We've got a friend. Um, yeah. Uh, and I like I make people like take the disc that are just my friends. <laughs> I'm like, and, and and like when I see it, it's like sometimes I get super excited. I'm like, oh, you're perfect for this. Like this is. Yeah. Like, but I love it. So. The disc, again, I go back to that, communicating with people the way they want to be communicated with. And so like you can walk into a house. I can quickly identify like, are you a high D, a high I? Like you and Ryan, you both are high Ds. Okay. You know, 100%. There's no doubt in my mind. And that is the dominant personality. That's, and this isn't a bad thing, but people that have a little bit of an ego to them. It's yeah, like the, the Donald Trumps of the world. Yeah. Um, not saying that you're like Donald I Trump, tr- but, yeah. Yeah. but, but yeah. it's not a bad thing. It's a yeah. great thing. Um, and I'm a high D. Um, mm-hmm. But when I'm communicating with a high D, I'm letting them feel like they commanded that conversation and they won the negotiation process. Yeah. And so if my max level offer is 160 or is 200 and I, I'm going to start at 160 and I'm going to let them feel like they're pulling my teeth to, to get me up in my price. Yeah. Like, Oh, I can do it once. Uh, let me, let me go call my boss and see if I can get higher. Let me, and, and there, it does something inside of them where it's like, I'm, I'm winning this. They're not, I was always yeah. going to go up to 200, but, yeah. um, with a high eye, it's the exact opposite. I'm also a very high eye where it's like, I, I, you just want to be best friends. You talk about the weather, talk about yeah, the yeah, sports yeah. teams. Like you're just because they're going to high eyes want to sell to somebody that they like and trust. Yeah. With a, with a high S, it's somebody that's incredibly sentimental. It's somebody that has a lot of um, emotional attachment to the house. So like if I ever walk a house and you open up a door and you see like their kids growing up in a door frame, like from the seventies, yeah. if you, you know, I'd see that all the time immediately. I'm like, this, this is a house I'm going to buy because it's a high S it's somebody that has a lot of sentimental, emotional value around this house. And oh. so with, with that, I'm pitching, like we're a local family. I pull out pictures of my kids, <laughs> pull out pictures <laughs> Show of our your wife. Yeah, your I wife do. Yes, exactly. No, seriously. Like, so I, I, one of our best deals we ever did we were sitting at the dinner table with uh, with the seller. She was this old, incredibly sweet, amazing lady. Um, and it was actually about this time last year. And they had the Christmas tree up. And uh, she needed to sell the house. And she just started crying. And she was, like, looking at the living room, at the, at the tree. She knew she was selling it. But she was just so sad because she was like, I... I I raised my kids in this room. She's like, I, we've had Christmas here for the last oh, 40 boy. years. And she's just bawling her eyes out. And, and I... I, I, I looked at her and I was like, hey, you're selling this house, uh-huh. but that doesn't mean you're giving away the legacy that you built here. Yeah. Like my wife and I, we're going to take, and I pulled out pictures. I showed her pictures of our old, we're going to take this and we're going to make this beautiful and we're going to sell it to somebody else. And they're going to get, get to create the same legacy that you did with your family in this house. And she's bawling even more and snot's coming out. And she's like, <laughs> oh so my. excited about that. Just pitching like, yeah. hey, this isn't this isn't the end. This is you get to be a part of somebody else's story. That's in hilarious. This. Yeah, and so and then with a high C, which I, I don't like C's. Um, they're just analytical. So with high C's, it's like here are my three comps that support my ARV. Here's my rehab budget. Here's how I buy houses. Here's yeah. my offer. Um, but just have dialed that in and gotten really good at that. And oh really? Teach that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I do that with every every single house that we buy. That's part of the the sales process. Is which like, is the hardest I, one? That one you think? Um, C's are, C's are hard for me because I'm just not a C. Um, uh-huh. they are the analytical, what, what are the, show me the numbers. And so for C's, there's not like a sales process to it. It's uh-huh. just, here's how I got to my number and here you go. Yeah. Um, and that's the, you know, obviously on top of that, it's identifying pain points where, you know, I talked with the guy, actually he lives here in Vegas that was, you know, he, he had some trauma around his childhood home. And oh his dad passed away and he literally, you know, he, he had talked to some other people that wanted him to come out, like some realtors to come out and clean it out and list it. And he called me and was like, he said, if, if you make me never step foot in St. Louis again, I will sell you the house for whatever. I just never want to come back to St. Louis. Um, and, and that's easy. You know, it's like done. Like here, yeah. here's my offer. Yeah. We'll go clean it out for you. We'll do, we'll do everything. You don't ever have to come. We'll set up a mobile notary to come to your house. You don't have to think anything. That was the pain point for him. Whereas he yeah. just didn't want to deal with it. He didn't yeah. ever want to come back to St. Louis. So yeah. that's, that's kind of our sales process in a nutshell. I Got could talk it. about this for 15 hours. Is there straight. any other like. So we use usually like the closer framework. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of it from Alex or Mosey? Like yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Table or review, mm-hmm. um, sell, uh, explain, mm-hmm. and then reinforce. Yeah. Um, besides the disc, 
is there any other processes that you guys like to use? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we we went through. Do you know John Martinez? Yep. Yeah, we went through. Kind of old Martin. school, right? Yeah, it's I, I super old has, school. Yeah. <laughs> Always like staying the step back. Like, yeah. so we went through that. We did. We've done Steve Trang's yep. stuff. Um, but for for me, and, and this could be so wrong. Uh, this could be, but I'm a firm believer that we buy houses because we we care about the person and there's not a there's not a script for that it's literally mm -hmm. going in there and taking the time to get to know the person same with a with a wholesaler like it, yeah. we take the time to get to know them and build relationships with them and that is our secret sauce is that we care we truly do care about the person and we've done multiple deals before where we make zero dollars, but we're just helping the person out. Um, yeah, whatever you are, I am not. Yeah. I am literally the complete other. So yeah. you're a high D and a high high I. Yeah. Well, isn't S the emotional one? S is yeah, sentimental, emotional. Yeah. So then you're kind of yeah. an S too, then, right? Um, I'm I'm not. Mm. Um, I'm not. I'm not at all. But but also like that that's security. So the S S like. They're, they want stability. They want security. That's I think I'm a high ass. Are you? Okay. Yeah, because I like security. You do? I like, like <clears throat> I like to know what's going on. I like clarity. Okay. I don't like. I used to like chaos. Yeah. But then after a while, you're like, okay, I can't run a business like this for yeah. very long, and you know, yeah. be at home stressed yeah. out, like, dude, are we going to file bankruptcy? <laughs> like, holy crap, it's oh, getting I, bad. I thrive off of chaos. I, <laughs> I thrive don't. Off of chaos. Yeah. So, well, and they say like a low, a low S, they call it like the firefighter personality, where because you're in a, fi you're a house and then, you know, the alarms ring and you jump on the, the you know, the firefighting. What, what, why can't I think of the, the pole? I don't no, know, no, whatever, whatever that thing that goes, the, not the ambulance. Why can't the fire truck? Fire truck. Why can't yeah, I think yeah, about yeah. that? Yeah. It's a um, tough word. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> super tough. But um, like you're always like sitting yeah. there waiting for the next thing to happen and yeah. there's no security, there's no stability. Yeah. Um, and then the higher S is the exact opposite of that. So what, what do you think I am? I, I think. So a, a high D, I mm -hmm. would actually guess that you're lower on the I. Okay. Um, not, not super low, but. Uh, but I, I would I would say high D for sure. I mean, I, I think I know only, for sure I'm high D. Yeah, yeah. every every entrepreneur yeah. Um, is typically. I've known I've, I've yeah. taken it before. I know I'm a, a high D. I don't remember the other one. Yeah, um, and then from what you just told me, then a high S, a high S. Yeah, um, and then are you overly analytical? No, no. Then yeah, I'd say. I, I think I think that's another thing. So when I first started, mm -hmm. I was very like, mm, I think we'll make like twenty k. Mm -hmm. Um, I think this, uh, you know, I was like eyeballing everything and, um, I am not like that anymore at all. Really? Yeah. yeah. I like to be very much like, I know exactly what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm playing for worst scenario. Yeah. And, um, I, I'm also like that with like wealthy investor and everything. Like I like mm -hmm. more like. I know what's going to happen. I just yeah. don't like the chaos, the chaos anymore. Uh -huh. Um, and I think also being partners with Ryan, Ryan yeah. is a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. if we had two crazy people, mm, we're in yeah, trouble. Exactly. So I've been forced to kind to of be, be more like, yeah. all right, well, let's let's have some projections. Uh, let's see yeah. what are we spending on this. Let's try to cut uh, back. Let's try to maximize. Yeah. But um, I think that has also changed Love. my personality. Um, yeah. over the years. Well, and what I love about the, the disc is that yeah. when you take the test, you have your adaptive state and your natural state. So mm. in, in, in a perfect world, you want those to be completely cohesive where, mm -hmm. because that means you're working in your genius zone yeah. and your adaptive state and your natural state are the same thing. I've seen people take it before where it's the exact opposite. I'm like, how do you, how do you live your life? You hate, you, you must hate your job. And the yeah. answer is always yes, because yeah, 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 they're yeah. doing things that they were not naturally designed to oh, do. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And and I but I feel like with most entrepreneurs there has to be times where you are working in like this like different state yeah. where like like let's say when taxes coming come around, right? Yeah. I freaking hate it. <laughs> yeah. I hate I probably hate taxes more than anyone else. I hate yeah. them. I hate looking at the the freaking bookkeeping. I hate like seeing all this crap, but then after a while 
it makes me better because I'm like, oh, like, yeah. I thought these houses that I was making 30, I'm making 15. What yeah. the hell? <laughs> and then you start and then uh -huh. it helps you with your your D because now you're like, OK, now I know instead mm -hmm. of a 35 K rehab, it's really going to be a 50 K rehab yeah. when everything's done. Mm -hmm. So I got to offer lower. So sometimes I feel like you do have to like kind of lean or with leadership, uh, super high D. I freaking heard everyone's feelings in yeah. the office and I don't <laughs> understand why no one likes me. But then I have to learn more of the sentimental stuff where I'm like, yeah. okay, like what's wrong? Why are you sad yeah. today? You mm -hmm. know, why do you feel this way? Oh, I didn't know me saying X, Y, Z would hurt your feelings. Yeah, so yeah, so oh, like yeah. you almost have to like, you have to, thrive what you're good at, but then you have to work on the things that you're not good at. I feel like dude and it, that I 100% agree with you. Cause that's, that's actually where we're at in our business right now mm -hmm. is I, I'm, I'm really great at acquisitions. Yeah. I, 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 I can buy houses. Yeah. Um, I'm not a great business owner, you know, to yeah. full disclosure, like yeah. I'm not, you might and be, I have, that might be wrong. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's a self limiting belief. I, I, I think I can, I can grow into it, but I've moved from, acquisitions to where I, I, I have, don't walk houses. I don't go to houses. Yeah. I'm the person behind the scenes now that's just making sure the business is running yeah. and, and I'm learning a ton, yeah. but it's not my genius zone. It's oh, yeah. not at all, but it, it's helping me grow as a leader, as an entrepreneur. Yeah. It's helping me see different areas in our business that, that I can make better. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's not something that like, I, I don't love that. I don't, I don't love the behind yeah. the scenes stuff, yeah. but it is making me grow as a person. Yeah. And, and that's what, so I went from same thing. I was acquisitions. And then for a couple of years, I didn't talk to a seller. Mm -hmm. I didn't go on an appointment for years, mm -hmm. literally years. Yes. I was just like, someone would send me a lead and I'm like, I'm not talking to this person. <laughs> like, you Give them to Amanda. Yeah. Like I'm not talking to them. And then with wealthy investors, same thing. Like I used to be on all the sales calls. I used to be mm -hmm. on all the coaching oh. calls. I used to freaking... Uh, go to the event space and like figure it out yeah. and then like now everyone else does it but then there are times too what has helped me is sometimes like i'll have someone else come in or i'll kind of it's weird i'll take myself out of the box yeah and i'm like okay like i'll sit down with a salesperson i'm like okay what do you do exactly like mm. show me like okay why do you label it this why do you put mm -hmm why don't you do this? Like why I'll kind of like start breaking everything down and then start trying to build it. But I won't like tear the whole thing down, mm -hmm. but I'll understand why everything is. And then I'll, and then I'll make some changes. Yeah. And that has been huge for me where I'm like, it's almost like I'll take a day of just like questioning. And then the, the team members, I make sure like before they used to hate it. Cause they're like, Oh, like, why are you questioning me? me? Yeah. I feel like I'm doing things wrong. It's like, I'm just asking. Cause I want to like, and also what I never did before, I never wrote anything down. <laughs> yeah, it, was it was just all in here and everyone was trained. Uh -huh. So now I'll say, okay, acquisition person is going to log into the MLS. They're going to make 10 offers a day. An mm -hmm. offer is this. A lead is this. The minimum profit should be this. Where before it was all kind of like we yeah. all kind of knew. But actually documenting everything. And like we use Google Sheets, uh -huh. but I fucking love Google <laughs> Sheets. <laughs> so that's your CRM? Is no, 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 no. Oh, use no. Oh, it's like for KPIs. Is, oh, for KPIs. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. For Google KPIs. Google is great, man. Uh, yeah, Google Sheets is great if we don't, if we can't get the data it, it, with like digital marketing, uh -huh. it's a little bit different than like yeah. houses because like it's, uh, there's so many like integrations with like go high level and yeah. close and click funnels and all this crap. Mm -hmm. And, and Facebook ads account. So like we we put everything from their sources into Google Sheets to read it all in one place. Love it. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And I think too, like you said this and it and it's so true. Um, and maybe maybe every entrepreneur, a lot of people that I talk to are like this, where you have everything in your head. Yeah. Um, and you expect people to be able to read your mind. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Like, I, used I do. To. Yeah. Yeah. I used where it's to, like, but anymore. I haven't, you know, going back to what we talked about earlier, like I I you sit down and you create a, a detailed process and then it's also easier um and this is something that we're getting into because we're we're growing right now is then it's just plug and play when somebody else comes in you've yeah. got that process down. you don't have to reinvent the wheel like 
It's not, you don't have to sit down and train them. That's, that's something that's hard with me. Every time I bring on somebody new, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm adding the next, you know, two weeks of my life to training this person and getting yeah. them up and running where it's like, when it is a systematized process, it's just, here you go. This is exactly what you need to do. Now go yeah. do it. And I don't have to. to yeah. I think, I think you shouldn't be training anyone. Yeah. Actually, they should always go shadow someone else for a mm-hmm. little bit and then maybe more hands-on training. But what we do now is like any new people, they're not getting trained by me or Ryan. Mm-hmm. Obviously they get yeah. trained by somebody else. But as far as leadership, I do train like the sales manager, mm-hmm. whoever's coming in as COO, whoever's like the higher level people. Yeah. We do sit, I do, we'll sit there and like train them and then make sure that like you almost sometimes feel like you don't need to train them as much because mm-hmm. they're higher level, yeah. but it's actually the opposite. You have to train them even more mm-hmm. because yeah. if they train your people wrong, then they're they're actually making a bigger impact negatively. Because yes. I've done that too, where I'm like, oh, we have a sales manager. All right, brother, I'm going to trust you. Yeah. And you're like, paying them more. Yeah. You're paying them more. They have experience. Yeah. You're like, all right, brother, you got this. And then they could really hurt the business because mm-hmm. now they're affecting five people instead of one person not performing. It yeah. turns, it could turn a whole team south. And we've had that before too. That's good. That's good. So yeah. But, um, all right, brother, I think this is a great but, podcast. We yeah. almost went like two hours. Um, yeah. if people want to reach out to you or find you, where do they go? Yeah. Honestly, just, uh, my Instagram account right now. Yeah. Okay. Instagram. What's your Instagram? So it's cam.cathcart. Cam. 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 Yeah. Beautiful. All right, yeah. guys. So. Well, this was the Wealthy Investor Podcast. Thank you for hey, coming on. Thank you so much for having me on. It was a blast. Beautiful. All right, brother. We are out. Peace. Right. Peace.